Welcome everyone to module 12 of Usability Engineering course. My name is Nilarnab Datta. I am a research scholar at Department of Design, IIT Guwahati. In this lecture, we will discuss about a case study on contextual inquiry, where a medical device has been developed out of a efficient contextual inquiry process. And the intent of this class is to go through various activities and strategies that has been adopted as a part of efficient contextual inquiry process. So, let me first give a brief recap of what we have learned in the last class. So, contextual enquiry is the core of a research and design project and it is the first step towards a successful design and research outcome. So, it is very much necessary that we do efficient contextual enquiry to get a good product outcome. So, it is important that we perform trustworthy contextual enquiry to make the overall design and research process logical, scientific and verifiable. However, depending upon the nature of the product or requirement, contextual enquiry can be exploratory. For example, if you are working in a new domain, a designer working in a new domain may not have past experience from where he can guess problems or unmet needs. So, for him it is completely exploratory in nature. Similarly, there can be contextual enquiry where the problem is known, but there has to be an enquiry why it occurs, what are the cause and effect of this particular incident. So, that, that fall under enquiry category. And the third category can be theoretical validation or concept validation when a designer or researcher have to validate something. However, the ultimate goal of a contextual enquiry process is to earn knowledge, collect data about specific context user, know who are the users, stakeholders and what phenomena are involved. Contextual enquiry process also lead to realization of requirements, problems, user aspirations, goals and resource gap. And also it can be used to validate hypothesis, outcome and theory that has been generated by designer or researcher. So, this is the case study I was talking about which is uh, design of a wound healing technology. It was part of a biodesign eye fellowship program at Ames, New Delhi. So, this was a flagship program initially started as Stanford biodesign program. And since it was an international program, multidisciplinary team was formed and people from various countries and disciplines joined together. So, in the batch of 2016, four Indian fellows and four international fellows were joined together to collaborate as a team in this particular project. So, this case study is about the journey experienced activities performed as a part of contextual enquiry process in identifying unmet clinical need from Indian setting. So, here is a disclaimer I want to mention that this lecture is free from any intellectual property contents generated out of the Biodesign Fellowship Program. It only showcases generic contents for educational purpose only. The process which I was referring to start with a peer to peer learning in 2016. Since all of us from various background, so it is important that we learn each other's expertise. We know the domains, little bit of domain knowledge needs to be there among us, so that later we can work together as a team. Initially, classes were scheduled where each team member has to teach the others about their expertise, their knowledge about their field, their work pipeline, etc. However, for all of them, the context was new because it was a clinical context and the clinicians that are part of this fellowship are either Japanese, there was a Japanese doctor involved and there is a nurse from Australia and they do not have any idea about Indian healthcare system and the context. And the rest of the team members were like designers, researchers, engineers, they never have any exposure in a clinical setting. So, it was new for everyone. At the very initial phase, there was a planning for clinical immersion. So, the clinical immersion was the first phase of contextual enquiry and it was planned to do field study at various tiers of Indian healthcare system. If we look into Indian healthcare system, it is hierarchical in nature and also very diverse. We have state of the art healthcare facilities at tertiary care hospitals like Ames and at the very resource and constraint settings we have primary health centers, sub centers like that. But the entire system is hierarchical in nature. 
So, at the very bottom we have sub centers and there are multiple sub centers under a primary health center. Similarly, there are multiple primary health center under a community health center and there are above community health center, there are district hospitals, then there are state medical colleges and hospitals and at very top we have the super specialty tertiary care hospitals like Ames, Apollo, etc. The contextual enquiry process was done in phases and the initial phase was very exploratory for all of us and was planned for health settings where patient flow was more. We started at community health center, Vallabhgarh and then we decided to move below, go below at PHCs and sub centers and later we thought of coming back to district hospitals. This is how it started the clinical immersion phase. The first clinical immersion phase was planned for three months and we are located almost 35 kilometer away from the location where the community health center and PHCs and sub, sub centers were located. And for us every day it was almost two, three hour journey and we need to move around 75 kilometer every day. And the all the eight members team were divided into four groups of two members and the teams, team members were shuffled every week within the team. However, all the field studies, observation, enquiries need to be conducted at individual level. So, we used to take our own notebooks, cameras where we can take picture if, if it is possible. So, we used to conduct our own enquiries in the healthcare settings. What we tried to capture was patient pain points, healthcare delivery gaps, etc. However, at the very beginning, we were not aware of Indian healthcare system and whatever data we have collected are not very much appropriate in all way. What we did was everyday observations we recorded in Excel sheet after coming back from our clinical immersion. Different contextual enquiry techniques have been used. So, we used patient shadowing, distance observation, OPD settings, then we try to blend with the crowd and try to ask patients what are their conditions. Then we also try to interact with clinician and patients to know about their pain points, why they are there and we try to extract useful information. And all of these are done through required permission and ethical approval. And here I want to mention one thing that if we are not allowed to take videography or photography in those clinical settings because it was considered ethically not correct. So, we have to depend a lot on our observations and shadowing techniques. Shadowing means you follow a patient without knowing him, without the aware of that patient know that you are following and try to observe his activities, his pain points and also try to listen what he described in front of a doctor in an OPD setting. So, during the first phase of clinical immersion, we visited various healthcare facilities like uh, antenatal care, ANC, pediatrics department, IUS, postnatal care, wards, child delivery, emergency, operation theater, PMR, ophthalmology, dentist, option gynecology, orthopedics, ENT. So, these are various departments we have visited and we try to capture as many as data every day. And next, we try to capture information down the CHC setting. So, this is the hierarchy how the healthcare setting in, in, in India exists. So, under CHCs, there are PHCs, and under every PHC, there are many sub centers, and each sub center can cover at least four to five villages and patients there. We visited PHCs very much closely located to the community health center, Vallabhgarh. They were PHC Chansa and Dayalpur and also we visited sub center Majgar. We also met very low level healthcare provider ASA worker and try to gather information about the regional healthcare issues and patient stories. So, these are some of the activities that we used to perform during that three month clinical immersion. So, we used to see, observe various patient pain points we try to see procedures, practices and we try to hear what the patient says, what the doctors say about the situation and then we used to take note of all of this information individually either by noting in a notebook or by electronic record and also we try to create some visual storyboards where we try to recreate the scenario 
with some sketches. And after we returned back from our clinical immersion, we used to learn what we have heard in the observations by internet searching and by reading various research articles, etc. So, these are some of the evidences that we have collected, these are some of the techniques how we captured the day to day observations through storyboarding. Photography and videography I al already told that it was not allowed in most places. So, for those places we need to only rely on our personal note taking capabilities. So, how we recorded our information? So, everyday observations were documented at individual level and observations were recorded in proper format by providing necessary informations like age, sex, observation, clinician, feedback, etc. And this is done at individual levels. Each of the fellows have their own seats. So, here is an example of another such observation seat. So, these are from someone else. So, by that time we ended the first phase of clinical immersion and it was time for us to analyze the data the initial from the an initial inquiry. So, what we did was we did a team discussion to analyze the similarities in observation. So, this was part of an investigator triangulation strategy that I have discussed in the last lecture that this is this can be a strategy to make a, a contextual inquiry process more trustworthy. So, what we did it that whatever observations we have in common and whatever problems we identified in common are considered finally for discussion and for recording. So, we identified disease states, clinical condition, cause and clinical presentation, etcetera and various healthcare disease and issues and problems. So, finally, what we did we have around 8 such observation sheets and we have to prepare one central database where all the common observation has to be recorded. So, all the repeated observations or clinical context were merged to create an observation database. They rec uh, we recorded the information in a systematic format like what we observed, what are the disease states, what are the cause and clinical presentation like that way. So, next job was to develop a need statement. Now, need statement have to be articulated to address the problem realized and it was a iterative process where multiple need statements were formed for target intervention and the reason why multiple need statements have to be formed because there can be intervention at various level and based on what we perceived as a problem and what we thought as an in intervention. So, for example, there can be several ways of managing diabetes. So, the need statement can vary based on the researcher's perception of a problem and requirements. One can think of uh, monitoring blood glucose early, one can think of managing blood sugar early, one can think of preventing the blood sugar at a very early stage. So, from the problem we have realized, we can actually go after various need statements, but we have to rank these need statements based on what is already there and what is not there, wh where the unmet need lies that needs to be realized. So, by the end of this first phase of clinical immersion, we end up with 600 plus observations and out of that we have generated around 320 needs. So, next was the second phase of contextual inquiry. The goal of this particular phase was to validate these 320 needs in Indian settings, whether they also exist in higher level healthcare settings like in district hospitals or at tertiary care hospitals. We also thought of doing focus group discussion and conducted clinical interviews to understand the problem and validate these needs. We collected data on current state of disease management and treatment options. So, we initiated with Bardhaban Mahabir Medical College and Subdurjan Hospital in New Delhi and first tried to gather information from the doctors, nurses, the clinician there and then we moved to higher tertiary care hospitals like AIMS, MAX, multi-specialty hospital to know about the advanced treatment options available there and what kind of patients come there. So, we visited departments at AIMS 
as a part of our second phase of clinical immersion and also uh, JPNA trauma center which is for emergency purpose. We collected information on state of the art treatment and management options and identify competitive landscape by knowing what kind of instruments and devices currently they are using to solve or to give treatment options. We also look for market opportunity where there is a device gap, where there is a need for a intervention. All these things we try to gather by doing this second phase of clinical immersion. We also attended clinical practices like surgeries under the guidance of doctors and try to see is there any kind of uh, issues in terms of intervention practices. So, this was done as a part of second phase of clinical immersion and then comes the filtration process. So, by the end of our second phase of clinical immersion, we already have around 320 needs. However, these 320 needs needs to be filtered down to 2 to 3 needs for future design and development. Our goal is also to identify the most promising scopes for product design and development. So, how we conducted this filter was a challenge initially, but later we get to know about it. So, based on types of need like whether the need is a blue sky, incremented or mixed. So, the blue sky means nothing has been done so far and it is a completely gray area where nobody has worked done so far. So, those kind of needs we try to eliminate. Then there are incremental needs where already there is a base where researchers are working and then on top of that you are trying to go forward and do some new interventions. So, those falls under incremental and we targeted for those and there are also mixed needs those also we targeted. Basically, we selected those needs which are incremental in nature and also mixed in nature. Then also there is a filter for team interest. The team has to have the interest to proceed with the, the process of developing certain product. Other filters we have implemented were patient impact by knowing what are the incidence and prevalence of a particular disease states, how a intervention can impact the society, all those things we have considered. Then provider impact, what is the current state of the clinicians, how they are practicing, whether a new intervention will help them to adapt to the new devices or the intervention you are bringing. Then also based on treatment outcome, you want to filter down those needs. Team voting is used to filter down those needs. Again, this is a point of investigator triangulation where a team voting is considered to select and filter particular needs. The sources of information were the previously collected primary data that were part of field study and expert feedback and the secondary information were from research article, clinical reviews, etc. This is how we filtered down the 320 needs to 103 needs at first level at phase 1 of filtration process. We considered the need type like blue sky, incremental or mixed and also we choose team interest. In the second phase of filtration, we considered patient impact and team interest and we filtered down to 76 needs. And in the third phase of need filtration, we considered provider impact and treatment option and finally, we arrive at 43 needs as our top needs for Indian setting. Then comes the third phase of contextual inquiry. In this phase, we are trying to validate whether these needs also exist in an international at the international level, whether the developed countries also have the same issues or clinical unmet needs. So, we as a team separated and one of the team of four members, we move to Tottori University, Japan and we looking forward to un identify unmet global problem there. So, this is School of Medicine, Tottori University, where we have visited. This is Tottori School of Engineering. And then we conducted the third phase of clinical immersion in Japan. So, we visited Tottori University and School of Medicine and uh, interact with experts from various departments there to discuss our top 43 needs. We also experienced the state of our technologies and treatment options in Japan from robotic surgery to autonomous diagnostics facilities, etc. And we tried to compare how these are different from Indian setting. 
the top 37 needs that we brought from India mainly fall under four categories in Japan, in Japanese healthcare setting. Mm -hmm. Those were emergency, ENT, orthopedics and internal medicine. And we took expert opinion to discuss about these issues and try to compare the healthcare setting differences between India and Japan. After this study and know-how about the state of these needs in a developed country, we returned back with 43 needs and it was required for us to further filtering these 43 needs to something workable. So, next thing we did after coming back from Japan was patient flow mapping. So, patient flow mapping is a process where you try to map the patient journey. You try to create a persona that represents a population for various disease states. You try to understand the issues in Indian healthcare system in comparison to develop economy and try to see what are patient pain points and gaps in healthcare facility and infrastructure. So, here is an example of patient flow map for throat cancer which is one of our need. So, it demonstrates patient flow across various healthcare settings from CHCs, PHCs to district hospitals to AIMS and it, it demonstrates what kind of pain points patient encounter in the process of getting good treatment and what are treatment options available. Are there any gaps in terms of uh, availability or accessibility of healthcare intervention in particular setting. So, this was very helpful for us and then with this kind of study, we then proceed further for our phase 2 of filtration process. The objective was to filter down the top 43 needs to something like 2 and 3 needs for future design and development. We also try to identify some needs, those are very promising for future product design and development. So, this time the filtration process that we choose was based on uh, filters like pathological understanding that is understanding the disordered physiological process associated with certain disease or injury. So, for that we need to refer various clinical articles, reviews and expert feedback. The other filters were degree to which the need is made, availability and accessibility of current solution and provider impact. Filters like time to market, competitive landscape and team feasibility was also considered. We also considered healthcare impact gap realized by patient mapping, business potential and funding opportunity because the ultimate goal of this particular fellowship was an entrepreneurial journey. So, we need to consider those needs which have a bigger scope for commercialization. In the phase 4 of filtration process, we filter down 43 needs based on pathophysiological understanding, degree to which needs were met, existing solution availability, provider impact and accessibility and we arrive at 22 needs. Similarly, in phase 5, we consider time to market, competitive landscape, team feasibility again to arrive at 11 needs. Now, by that time, we actually also started understanding the various technologies as a part of solution so that later we can filter down our needs based on technological availability and team feasibility. At phase 4 which was the final filtration process, we arrive at top 6 needs which were based on patient flow mapping and various analysis we did on top of that and by considering healthcare impact, the business potential and the funding opportunity. So, later by the end of a year of contextual enquiry, we finally selected three top need areas based on rigorous technological assessment and team discussion. So, the three need areas were cancer screening, neurological monitoring and wound management. Now, these are areas but exact need statements are not disclosed here. So, soon after we arrive at our need areas and final needs, we have generated need specifications which are very similar to product specification that we do as a part of user centric design process. So, this needs rigorous requirement analysis to arrive at requirements in two categories, those which are must have and those which are nice to have. So, we here give priorities to clinical requirements and those requirements comes under must haves 
and other requirements like user expedition, contextual requirements, we put it as nice to haves. Here is an example for wound healing. So, that is the end of the contextual enquiry process that we did as a part of the fellowship till the end of 2017. In 2017 January, we co-founded a company called Inochi Care Private Limited and where we chose wound management area to proceed for an entrepreneurial journey. So, I was part of the design and development team and we have gone through an 18 month period for product development and process to arrive at this final product which is a beta prototype. So, this is the final summary of today's class which is how contextual enquiry we look into it from the perspective of trustworthiness. If we look into the process, what are these various strategies implemented, we find that we have used some of the strategies that I have discussed you earlier in the previous class. For example, data triangulation. In the contextual enquiry phase, we collected data from both rural and urban setting of India and that from a developed country like Japan also. So, there is a geographical variation of data collection and only those needs were considered which exist in all the three settings, low resource settings, the urban setting and the developed country setting. Then there was a strategy like investigation tri triangulation. A multidisciplinary team was involved in data collection and only those problems and needs were selected which were common and realized by all team members and experts. There is a complete validation that the contextual enquiry data we have collected were free from any kind of biases. Then there was a theoretical triangulation like clinical knowledge, biomechanism, existing disease states were already informed to us. Also, we studied those to actually realize for certain issues to realize what are the cause and effect of this particular disease states. So, those were for us as theoretical evidence for choosing particular need area. Then the other strategy also we have considered is multiple methods of data collection. Various techniques of data collection were used like observation, user shadowing, interview, focus group discussion, expert feedback. So, this way we maximize the variation from the user, the stakeholders input and uh, we can conclude that the inputs we got from various stakeholder and users are trustworthy. Also, we adopted this strategy like adequate data to reach thematic saturation. Only those problems were considered which were repeatedly observed during our clinical immersion. Certain problems which occur only one or two times, we never considered those as a part of a problem or clinical that needs a clinical intervention. And also, we considered peer and expert review we consulted healthcare professional stakeholders for their feedback and input. So, that is the end of this lecture. I hope you learn a lot about contextual enquiry process and how it can be made trustworthy. Thank you.